Hi everyone. Good evening. It's, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. And, um, and yeah, I'm an educational leader according to this, so, so we'll go with that for now. And the title of the presentation is Creating a New World. I was going to call it Whole New World, but I figured you might expect a song and there might be some copyright infringement. So, you know, I didn't do that. So, I have to say, I feel like an imposter here because we've heard some absolutely incredible talks. And Donna, thank you very much for putting this together. It's certainly been inspiring. Um, it's got us to reflect. It's got us to, in some cases, really, really deeply reflect, be moved, been inspired. And now it's time for some creation. So, why am I even standing here? This is about representation. But what does that mean, to represent? Well, I can't ask you that until I think about that myself. So there's going to be a bit of a story to this. Why am I here? It's philosophical, but there's also a factual question as well. What does representation mean to me? Well, I've got to go back a little bit. I'm mixed race, which means that my dad is born, was born in the exotic place of Stevenage. Many roundabouts, great weather, beautiful beaches. And my mother was born in the not so exotic place of Mauritius. Oh no, sorry, excuse me. Actually, that's not true. She came, my grandparents were born in Mauritius. And so my representation is mixed. I've got a Muslim, Asian ish background and a Christian, Stevenagian background. So I'm just confused most of the time. So when I have to define my representation on an ethnicity box, I don't know what to choose. What do I tick? And when I was growing up, if there's one thing that I do remember, is that it's better to be white, right? It's better to be white. Why did I think that? My dad definitely told me that. In fact, he told me the opposite. He'd be like, no, if anything, don't learn anything from my parents. Learn stuff from your mum's side, right? Because that's the side where you, know, you really need to get your values from and so on. Not that there's anything wrong from the other side. But I remember growing up just being confused, not knowing where I came from, how I fit in. Am I English? Am I Mauritian? Am I half and half? You know? And that led me with a lot of questions. But my default would be to be white. Because that's what I tick. Because that was the dominant culture that I saw. That has been ingrained in my psyche. And I've called it a narrow path in a polarized time because we live in a world where things gravitate, I think, so quickly to the left and the right. These sound bites we get of TikTok that we seem to think are so factual and representative of the truth. So not only am I confused, I can't even tell what's true or not, or even if what we're seeing is actually real or has been generated by sort of some, some computer. So how do we get truth and value in a time like this? Well, it's a challenge. But if there's one thing that I think we need to understand and perhaps remind ourselves, is that history has been written by the victors. History, this was attributed to Winston Churchill, not validated, but let's assume it was him. But if history is written by the victors, then does that mean that our institutions, our education, our communications, our establishments have been crafted by the same authors? Stands to reason. And I think this is something that we forget. And it means that in that process, we find ourselves accepting things that aren't necessarily true or completely true. We accept things that have probably been filtered or have had some sort of manipulation. Things like this, because I'm sure some of you might recognize who this man is, some of you might not. This is Lewis Latimer. Lewis Harold Latimer was a contemporary of someone who you might not recognize because, but you might, might know the name, of Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison the accredited with inventing the light bulb, and he did indeed invent a light bulb. He invented a paper filament light bulb, which would light up for a few seconds, sometimes a bit longer. But it was Lewis Latimer who invented the carbon filament light bulb. It was Lewis Latimer's carbon filament light bulb which lit up the world. It was Lewis Latimer's carbon filament light bulb which allowed the world to see. But we don't learn about him. Why don't we learn about people who connect to our identities? Who connect to my grandfather's identity, who made the trip in 1958 from Mauritius around Kenya, on boat, he didn't swim, all the way around to the UK. Got to the UK, realized it was cold, and then decided to go back to Mauritius, 
then realized there were better job opportunities in the UK, and was asked to come back, and therefore came back again. So my poor grandmother was on a boat for nine months out of the year. But where are our histories? Where are the people who we resonate with? We're in a classroom listening to a teacher, or where we're in an institution with someone that's giving information. It's lacking. It's a map. First thing wrong with this map, it's a map, isn't it? You get taught about maps at school. You go on Google, you see maps. This map isn't right. Firstly, it's flat. I mean, I'm not speaking to flat earth theorists, but it's flat. And we don't live in a flat world, I don't think. I mean, you know, unless that's wrong. But I don't think we live in a flat world. We live in a world that's a bit more spherical than that. And this map is a representation of what's called a Mercator map. And the Mercator map is named after Gerardus Mercator, who was a Flemish cartographer, like drawing maps, and he created a very useful map in the 1600s. And the idea of the map was to accurately represent how the world looks. We use the same map today. There's a problem with this map. The problem is, as you can see, it's flat, but the world is round, well, spherical. And so the problem is that it's pretty accurate near the equator, but it exaggerates the size of the countries that are on the north and on the south. So what happens if you were to look at a, a real map, i.e. actually measuring the coordinates? Well, here's the map again, the Mercator map. And this is what happens to the countries when you actually overlay them. So the blue is what the map is projected to you as, and the pink is what the actual size is. Note which continents it affects the most. I mean, Africa is pretty much the same. So try look at Africa. Okay, let's go to Africa a little bit. Look at those right angles. How do those right angles get there? Who decided that those were the borders of, those, of that country? How, who divided that continent up, right? We don't learn about this. Why not? It's a pretty important thing to learn about. And why is it that the countries that are most affected are the ones in the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere? Because you grow up thinking that Africa is smaller than it is, and you grow up thinking that Russia, Greenland, look at Greenland, the, the North, and North America is bigger than it is. Notice all I'm doing here is giving more information. And Gerardus Mercator, I don't think, set out to give us a false map, and it's not a false map, it was his method. But why is it that we're not learning about maps in a, in a more enlightened way? Or in a way that casts a bit more light? Things are important, information is important. If we look at Africa in a bit more detail, the continent of Africa, and you can see the right angles there again, and the shapes which are interesting. You got. There's a, the paradox, the African paradox is, Africa is rich in natural resources, but its resource wealth is one of the lowest among the world's developing regions, both in aggregate and per capita terms. It is the richest continent, but for some reason is the poorest. This is not an accident. And in order for me to understand my identity, in order for you to understand yours, in order for us to understand our collective identity, surely it's important to understand the world as it really is, as opposed to a projection of the world that has been given to us. This is critically important, uncovering truth, adding light to where there is currently darkness. Why is it? that the most resource-rich area of the world is the most impoverished. This is unacceptable. It is a country that is rich in resources, but history is written by the victors. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And as we saw from my good friend Ricardo, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world, as Nelson Mandela taught us. And so that is what I've been working on with a team of people who are looking to create a new world. It's a narrow path because you've got people on the left and people on the right just telling you how to create one. The world is going to be created new anyway. It's, it's happening anyway, right? So we're already in a new world. You can't step into the same river twice. I think that's the motto or, or the phrase. And so therefore, the world is already going to be created. So why, why don't we shape it? Why don't we make it something that's more representative of us? How are we going to do that? Well, first of all, you need a bit of a vision. You need to think about... What sort of world do we want to create? It's a good idea, rather than just letting the world just continue as it is. You also 
to create a new world, you need some output. So what's going to be in it? And what we really wanted to focus on is there being more truth or more light, more understanding of what represents our communities, our history, our points of connection. And you also need a team who can help you build it. And so I've been working with a talented team of people to create a virtual new world, which I hope can give us a bit of inspiration to make it come to life in reality. So it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to Perthen, which we can hopefully have a look at. Hello, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the very first anti-racist virtual world, Perthen. My name is Yusuf Ibrahim, and I am the project lead for the FE Anti-Racism Curriculum. Parathin means belonging, and this world has been created by a talented team of people who come from a variety of backgrounds to express different ethnic and cultural identities. This world is here for us to learn, to learn about one another as well as ourselves. I invite you to explore this world, to listen to the stories, to engage with the histories, to experience the innovative lessons, all of which have been crafted to help us in becoming an anti-racist nation. This is a journey for all of us. It is a journey which will add light to our curriculum, a journey of discovery, one which I hope will allow us to grow and connect with our shared humanity. I wish you safe travels on your discovery. So growing up in Cardiff, I have a really interesting um, academic journey, whereas I carried on education uh, from the whole of primary school. So I went to school until year six, and then I was taken out of school, and I didn't do secondary school until I was working back to education when I was 19, yes. So then I enrolled on some 